So I'm cooking a dish from every single country in the world in alphabetical order. This is like a 10 year plan. Today, we're making a dish from Brazil. Since I started this Around the World Challenge, I think that the Brazilian national dish is by far the most requested. People want to see me make this thing, and it's built up a lot of hype. It's called feijoada. It's like this big black bean stew filled with meat, specifically and mostly pork. The off cuts too, so it's like some interesting stuff in there. You just take a look at my fridge right now, it's just all these different parts of the pig. Whatever you need, I got you covered. So that's how this dish came to be, using the offcuts and cooking it low and slow and turning it into something really special. It is an important dish in Brazilian culture. You can enjoy it with family, different occasions, different times of the week. It can be an all day thing. It's all dependent on where you are in Brazil. And of course you just don't eat feijoada on its own. You gotta serve it with some sides, it's mandatory. That will all be revealed along the way. Right now I just wanna focus on the feijoada because we got a lot to do. This is taking me quite a bit of time just like to build up this collection of pork products. And there's like specific stuff I had to find too. We'll get into that in a second. But as I am in New York, there is a Brazilian food market here. And I was speaking to the lady that worked there and she said, she was from a certain province in Brazil, and it's common that they add carne seca, a Brazilian salted dry beef. So in honor of her and her helpful tips, Here's the carne seca. I'm gonna add it in even though my recipe doesn't tell me to do so. But there's a specific way I have to prep this thing as it is salted. So I'm gonna do that first before I get into all of this. Portly pig. Bowl me. Thank you. Well, I'm gonna add this into this bowl. I'm gonna fill this up with cold water. Just have that hang out in the cold water for half an hour and I just gotta change the water like three times, three times. What's in here? Dried black beans soaking in cold water since last night. This is a tip from a Brazilian friend that results in a very dark stew. Put your beans in a pan with the soaking water. The thing that's kind of confusing is that it told me to use plenty of cold water to soak the beans last night. And now it's just telling me to use that soaking water. Just plenty of it. So I shall. I'm gonna add five whole cloves of garlic and bring this to a boil. Down to a simmer for one hour. Now, I've been taking kind of a nonchalant approach to this recipe so far, but now that I'm looking at everything I have to do and the hours in the day, I'm like, okay, maybe I should just kind of turn it up a notch. So one by one, let's go through all this stuff. All right, so firstly, I need 300 grams worth of pork shoulder cut into two to three centimeter chunks. All right, next up, we got 300 grams of pork belly, also cut into chunks. Maybe get the skin off first. Cut strategically so you got fat and meat on each little piece. Brazilian calabresa, smoked sausage. I picked this up from that Brazilian food store. And I want 300 grams worth. I think I'm just gonna cut it into like slices like this. It is already cooked. Brazilian smoked pork ribs. This has also been fully cooked. These pork ribs can be split into single pieces or cooked whole. Let's do single pieces. I think the specifics of how I'm supposed to cut this all up is up to like how you want it to be presented in your stew. So the idea seems to be that you're not keeping the meat too big but you're also like kind of having it on display, showing it off so you know what it is. So in this case, I want it to look like it's pieces of rib. So smoked sausages, smoked ribs, pork belly, pork shoulder. That is one big plate of pork. Before we get going with anything else, let me introduce you to what I was doing last night. Last night, I put the smoked ham hock in a saucepan full of water. Added in one whole chopped onion, two chopped garlic cloves, teaspoon of whole peppercorns, a bay leaf. Brought it up to a boil, then simmered for three hours. Put it in the fridge overnight while I was sleeping, and here we are now. I got one small smoked 
ham hock. Here I have my ham hock stock. I don't need to do anything with this just yet, I just need the saucepan. So I thought I'd, you know, introduce you to it now. Bring over the carne seca. It's been soaking in some cold water for, for a while. I'm gonna add it into a saucepan. Bring that up to a boil for 10 minutes. Safety first. Yeah, let that cool for a second. So what I can do with this first is cut off the fat. Look at that, medium rare, ow. And then cut into half inch cubes. The million dollar question is, what is this all about, right? Ah, oh, that's salty. It tastes like I just took a big gulp of seawater. Maybe I was supposed to cube it first. So I'm gonna add it into some cold water. So that has not been sufficiently desalted. So I think I'm just gonna do everything that I just did all over again. I have this slab of bacon. Why not add a little of this to the mix as well? You know, I added the pork belly, but this is cured. I'm not gonna add too much though. How much should I add? How about that much? Take off the skin. So kind of like cut it up into cubes, kind of like lardon. Into the... Lovely. Get the beans over here. And with these beans, they need to be almost cooked through. Are they? Are they almost cooked through? I would say so. I need to reclaim my Dutch oven. I'm just gonna keep the beans over here. There's just so much, so much going on here. So I need to chop up three onions. And what I'm gonna do is just says chop it up. So I'm gonna go for the dice. Here is the salted beef, the second time around. Let's have a taste. Much better. So we need to talk about my trotters. Pig's feet, two of them. This is the very first time I've ever held pig's feet in my hand. Uh, I only need one of them though. I should probably wash this. The reason I have this trotter in my hand, trotter in my trotter, is uh, because it's gonna add a more gelatinous quality to this stew. So uh, if you got a trotter, use it. It's optional though. Add it to the pig pile. Everything has been officially mise en place. That only took a few hours. So it's nice to move on to the next part, which is the cooking of this thing. Shall we go to the stove? I think we shall. Hello, gonna be kind of like a one pot situation. So let's get the heat on and I'm gonna render some of this leftover pork fat. Now with my big plate of pig, I'm gonna start browning stuff. Uh, let's start with the trotter and the pork belly and bacon. Out goes the trotter. So once that first batch has started to brown with a slotted spoon, get it the hell out of there. Calm before the storm. And pork shoulder. The sausages. Now it doesn't say anything specifically about browning these ribs, but I figure what the hell, get in the good stuff. I think this beef needs a little TLC, so let's get that in there, into the flavor. There is a hell of a lot of good flavor in there. Once the meat has been sufficiently browned, in go the chopped onions. Four cloves of garlic that I'm gonna pass through this little contraption here. Two whole bay leaves. Two teaspoons of smoked paprika. And a pinch of dried thyme. Okay, get some of this pork back in there. The pig's foot, the pork belly, and the pork shoulder. The beef. Something just turned off. Oh, that light did. 
and I'm gonna get the ribs in there. So I got the ham hock stock, but remember from last night, it's got all the peppercorns in there. So am I really adding the peppercorns in this ham hock stock in here? I don't know. I don't think so. I will have to strain this. I think someone's accidentally pressed delete on an entire section of the recipe that I'm following along to because there's no mention of adding water or anything like that. It was only to add in the ham hock stock and it says bring that to a boil, but I need like something in here. There's nothing. I think I need to look at other recipes to figure this out. So learning from all the other stews I've made in my life, I think I need to add enough water to cover everything. And if it's too much, I'll reduce it. Got that to a boil. I'm gonna turn it down to a simmer with the lid on for an hour. So I've been watching this thing this last hour, making sure I'm skimming the fat because there has been quite a bit of it. Now, when you're skimming the fat, sometimes you take off a little too much, right? Well, I have this new method where I just kind of skim it into my fat separator. Look at all that fat. And once it settles down, I'll take what I want, put it back in the pot. Next up, I'm gonna add in the remaining pork, which is the bacon and the sausage. It is time to add in the black beans. Did I mention this is around 400 grams worth? And yeah, I'm going with metric today because the recipe I'm following is metric. So once I give that a good old fashioned stir, does it need any salt? No. Um, okay, so for another hour, I'm gonna keep this simmering with the lid on. While we wait, we got lots to do. I gotta make one, two, three, four. I gotta make, so I gotta make five sides. So yeah, this is gonna be a busy hour. <laughs> We're gonna start off with some collard greens. This is a bunch of it. <laughs> That's what it's called, a bunch of it. I've rinsed these off, but I haven't dried them. I gotta ribbon these. The biggest one goes on the bottom. I roll this up tightly. All right, we can get rid of those stems. I'm gonna make these thin ribbons and just kind of cut through and obviously this like ribbon shape here. Can you see? Can you see? I'm trying to do as thinly as I can. We got ribbons over here. Mince up some garlic. Okay. Seems straightforward enough. Cast iron skillet. Half a tablespoon of olive oil. Two and a half cloves of minced up garlic. On a medium heat, let's get that garlic golden. Okay, in go the collard greens. Toss them around until they're dark green and tender with a little bit of a crunch. Okay, so we need to do... This is my pre-cooked ham <laughs> This is my pre-cooked ham hock. Easy there. If there is any meat available in this ham hock, I need to peel it off. As of right now, there appears to be absolutely nothing. Never mind. There is no meat in this ham hock. Stand down. So we're gonna move on to this salsa. Sounds delicious. I just don't know much about it. I don't know why I'm whispering. Okay, so let's start off with a bunch of spring onions and I need to chop them up. It doesn't say finely, it just says chop. But while we're here, why don't we just do something like this? With one garlic clove, I need this just like obliterated. There's always stuff that doesn't go all the way through. Yep. Some flat leaf parsley that I need to roughly chop at two tablespoons worth. Bull me. Parsley goes in as well as that garlic. Chopped up spring onion. I really don't know what I was smoking. That was way more than two tablespoons of parsley. Just take a little out. It's all good. Canned chopped tomatoes, 200 grams worth. And this is 400 grams, so I need half of this. Avoiding any mix-ups, I'm gonna measure the rest. One tablespoon of red wine vinegar. Three tablespoons of olive oil. Salt and pepper to taste. And give it a mix. Salsa. Okay, getting there. Next up, I gotta make some rice. Cook up some rice. 
Uh, so yeah, I picked up a bag of rice, but this is from that Brazilian shop I keep telling you about. It is actually imported from Brazil. Long grain Brazilian white rice. And you know, the best way to cook up some rice, the Brazilian way, is to follow along to the directions on the back of the bag. That's what I would think. Be best to just give it a rinse. Melt two tablespoons of butter. Add in my one cup of rice and fry it. In goes two cups of boiling water. Bring it up to a boil, put a lid on it for around 15 minutes. What is going on with this feijoada? After another full hour, this thing was still pretty runny. So I took the lid off and had it boiling for the last half an hour. I think this is what we're looking for. We are, I can smell it. I can smell it, we're getting close to the end. The next side that we gotta make is a pretty important piece of this puzzle. It's called farofa. And we are using cassava flour, some onion, and a little bit of love. No, I don't, I gotta look at the recipe. It is imperative to have it alongside your feijoada. Feijoada, I haven't said it in a while. Feijoada. 200 grams of coarse cassava flour. Take out the last pan that you have left that's really gonna work for this. Add in 70 grams worth of butter. That wasn't, like all of this is. On to the heat. One finely chopped up onions. Cook that in the butter and the oil for five minutes. In goes the cassava flour. I gotta turn down the heat. I'm just gonna add in a pinch of salt. Keep it stirring constantly for around 10 minutes until it's slightly toasty and crunchy. I know what I'm looking for and I'm not gonna lie, it's taken around 20 minutes. Toasty and crunchy. All right, so I gotta learn how to suprem an orange. So I'm gonna cut off the skin and the membrane of this orange. And then I'm just gonna cut this into slices. All right, so this isn't the color of the orange I was aiming for, so let me just try that again with something that is the actual color of orange. Let's get this feijoada over here. Trotter or the pig foot has to go. Sorry. And we gotta find the bay leaf. There it is. I can't find the other bay leaf. I can't remember if I put two in here or not. There it is. I have a couple ideas up my sleeve. Nothing concrete, but I have these. Uh, Farofa into this dish here. That means the collard greens can go into this one. Extra space here. Why don't you put the oranges right beside it? Look at that color. Right here is the last piece to the puzzle. Right on top of there. Order up. Everything you could possibly want in a plate of food. You got the savory meat stew, the crunch from the farofa, the carby rice, fruit and vegetables, and the freshness from the salsa. Bravo, all these flavors, all in front of me here. This thing is poetry. Earlier today, if you kind of just like peek through the curtains, see how the sausage is made with this feijoada, there's no pun intended, but there is kind of a pun. Um, you would be a bit like, okay, well, how does a pig's foot work with like an orange? But it, it does. It's fantastic. Brazil, your food rocks. That's all I have today. I'll see you guys in another country that also starts with the letter B. Bye bye. That being said, I put way too much on my plate and this is my second helping, so. Also, it's like, <laughs> it's 11 o'clock at night. And the million dollar question is, would the doorman like some feijoada? Yeah, I don't wanna go down wearing this.